So I do a lot of the smaller budget PC builds on the channel, ranging anywhere from $600 up to a thousand. And then I do a lot of the high-end builds ranging from like $4,000 all the way up to 10,000 and beyond. I don't think I've really done anything in between. So with that said, I've decided to bring you guys the best $1,500 gaming and streaming PC that you can build for 2024. And it's using all new parts. Let's begin. Yeah, then I said the thermal paste doesn't go into the butthole. It goes on the CPU. What the hell? Who put this conveniently placed pan of water in the middle of the sidewalk? Her shoes are ruined. God damn it. Who the hell is this? Whoa, what the hell? Whoa, what are these? Hmm, all right, let's put them on. Wow, it just slips right in. Oh, these are so comfortable. Hot. Winter is coming, so a pair of warm and comfy sneakers for everyday use is a must. We don't really get heavy winters in Cali, but having a pair specifically for cold weather is not a bad idea. The Stormburst Vessies don't just look super sleek, but are also insanely comfortable and fully waterproof. I won't ever have to worry about rain or puddles and even snow if I ever go to Utah. But right now, they make a great pair of comfy shoes for my daily activities, whether it's to drop off the kids at preschool or ship out PCs that I've built. They come in four different color combinations and you can choose between high and low tops. So the Stormburst can fit many different styles. So if you'd like to stay warm and dry during the winter, visit vessi.com slash techsource or click my link below to get yourself a pair of Stormburst with an extra 15% off your first order. So this entire PC cost me $14.98.96 at the time of making this video. The CPU I went with is the Ryzen 7 7700X 8 core 16 thread processor, which is still a very solid gaming chip that can also be used for heavy workloads whether you're editing videos, 3D modeling, or streaming. We do have the budget to fit in a nice all-in-one cooler, but I didn't want to cheap out either, so I threw in the 360 EIO from Gandias. The Aura GL360 V2 features a hidden cable routing design for a much cleaner look from the front and offers 30 built-in lighting effects which you can change with the built-in switch or you can simply sync this with your motherboard software. This does come in black but since we're doing another white build I opted for the white version instead. For only $85 this makes the Aura GL360 V2 one of the best bang for the buck 360mm AIOs in the market. The motherboard we're using with the CPU is the same one I used for the $1000 budget build because of its value. I actually snagged this for only $90 on Newegg because it was an open box, but the sale is no longer active because it sold out three hours after my video went live. So to everyone who was able to snag one for my video, you are very lucky and also you're welcome. But since the sale is no longer active, I do have to list the full retail price in the video, which is $150. But with that price, you get a fully equipped micro ATX board with four DIMM slots, amazing VRM coverage, built-in I.O. shield, onboard USB-C, and built-in Wi-Fi 6E connectivity. For memory, we are going with silicone power again because they have a pretty sick 32GB kit for less than $100. The Storm models feature 6400MTs with a seal 32 timing, and you get an RGB heat spreader all for $94, which is impossible to find anywhere else currently. The best part is that this kit works with Intel XMP and AMD Expo, so you are pretty much guaranteed a stable overclock, and that is indeed the case with this PC. I was able to obtain a full 6400 MHz as advertised by simply going into the tweaker tab of the BIOS, opening up the XMP configuration, and selecting the first extreme memory profile. The memory also plays nicely with the ASRock Poly Chrome software. You can either change the lights on the memory separately or sync everything together and control it that way. These sticks have been by far the easiest to work with compared to my previous budget build, so thank you Silicon Power for making such amazing DIMM modules. Since we have a bit of a higher budget this time around, this means we can fit in a much larger drive. A single 2TB M.2 SSD should be plenty for our operating system and our game files. The Silicon Power 2TB XS70 is among one of the best deals on a Gen 4 NVMe drive without sacrificing speed. In fact, you get insanely high read and write speeds of up to 7300 and 6800 megabytes per second respectively. The XS70 also features 3D NAND flash memory and NVMe 1.4 support for higher performance, 
lower latency and lower power consumption, which is exactly what you need for a gaming PC. On top of that, it's also compatible with the PS5. So if you ever plan on downgrading to a console, you can sell your PC and install this directly into your PS5. It has a built-in heatsink already, so all you have to do is pop it in. For the graphics card, we were able to squeeze in a brand new RX 7900 XT graphics card, which is pretty high up there on the food chain and also sits right underneath the more expensive RTX 4080. But instead of paying 40% more for only an average of 10% FPS gains, I got the ASRock RX 7900 XT instead for only $630, giving us the most value imaginable for this price point. I did decide to paint this card as well, so it blends in better with the color scheme, but I didn't paint the whole card this time, and instead just painted the PCI bracket, the back plate, and this front rail piece. But if you're going with all black build, then obviously just keep it stuck. So the case choice always comes down to personal preference. It's all about what type of budget you guys have and what you want to achieve in terms of looks and thermals. You guys can go with any case that your heart desires as long as it fits all the components and it's within the budget. For today's build, I decided on the Gamdias Talos E3 Mesh Elite to kind of get the best of both worlds when it comes to thermals and looks on top of being future-proof because it does support EATX motherboards. So if I ever decide to upgrade the PC in the next, I don't know, three or four years, I know that this case will be large enough to support all the new components. But yeah, I mean, you get a good looking mid tower with a front mesh panel and three included RGB fans. There are two 140s in the front to maximize airflow and a single 120 millimeter fan in the back. You also get Gen 2 Type-C connectivity along with USB 3 and a dedicated button to control the RGB lights. However, you can use the motherboard's RGB software to control them more conveniently. Despite the overall small footprint of the case, you can still fit in dual 360 millimeter radiators. One can go on the top and one more in the front because of this cutout on the power supply shroud. And if you're a storage fiend, you'd be pleased to find a good amount of trays in the back of the case for your 2.5 inch SSDs and traditional hard drives. Now, I've personally built in a lot of budgety mid-tier cases before, but I gotta say the E3 Mesh Elite offers a lot of bang for the buck. Now, I got all of this for only $75, but it looks like it was currently on sale on Amazon because its actual retail price is $85 for the white case and $5 less for the black one. So depending on when you guys watch this video, the discount might not be available. And finally, for the power supply, we're going with the Gambias Kratos 750 watt power supply, which is more than enough to power the entire system and still support future upgrades. More importantly though, this is a gold certified power supply and Gambias is known to produce power, efficient and stable power supplies. And finally, the cable extensions, which are always optional, but you know, you are building a PC that will potentially live on your desk and be looked at every single day. So why not invest into a premium cable kit to improve the look of your PC? These do come in both white and black. And if you want to pick up a set, I'll link them below. And with that, let's stop the yapping and start the gaming.
Fantastic performance across all the games we tested. We were easily pushing above 300 FPS on more than half the games we tested in 1440p high settings, which is absolutely insane. In Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone, we were pushing close to 400 FPS thanks to frame generation, which by the way, I have to say, I messed up big time in the last $1,000 budget PC because I forgot to enable frame generation in Call of Duty. That's why we were barely getting 100 FPS in high settings instead of the 250 plus that we should have been getting. Don't make the same mistake as me if you're playing Modern Warfare 3 or Warzone 2 on an RDNA 3 graphics card. When you open up the graphics settings in game and go to quality, make sure to click on the show more button under the upscaling section. By default, frame generation is set to off for some reason. Make sure to turn this on if you guys want to boost your frame rates. As you can see, I was getting around 300 FPS in 1440p high settings, but after enabling it, we shot all the way up to 450 FPS, and sometimes it would even pass 500 FPS. So if you're mostly a Call of Duty player, including the new Black Ops 6 that's coming out soon, then this is the best PC for you because Call of Duty favors RDNA 3 architecture. So any of the new Ryzen 7000 series GPUs would be perfect for you. The temps did pretty good as well. The GPU peaked at 60 degrees Celsius and the CPU saw max temps of 80 degrees Celsius on the more demanding titles like the finals. This is how quiet the PC is. It's not that quiet. So yeah, I mean, not the quietest PC I've built for sure, but that's to be expected because we're using an AIO instead of an air cooler. An all-in-one cooler has more fans, plus you have to take into account the pump noise as opposed to just a single fan from an air cooler. So that's why a PC is typically louder with an AIO compared to an air cooler. Either way, links to everything will be posted down below along with my super popular build guide that will help you build your very first PC or really any PC that you want. If you guys are enjoying the budget builds on the channel, consider subscribing or even supporting the channel by picking up a badass mouse pad from our tech source shop. We just dropped our new Sakura and Koi designs, which are a part of our season 12 collection, uh, but we do have a ton of other designs if you guys wanna check out. TechSourceShop.com or just click the link below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in the next one.